ideal man who combines discreet physical brutality with sensitivity and sophistication? Don't ring me. Go to Los Angeles and ring Jeff. You can hear Jeff's voice for as long as you can afford it or until you faint from ecstasy just by making a phone call on your credit card. You've never had an experience like the one you'll encounter if you pick up that phone and dial 1-800-JEFF. I have a fantasy for any and all of your needs and desires. Call. But Jeff isn't just a voice. He's a face, complete with lip gloss. <laughs> just imagine you and me alone at the top of the hill with the beautiful city lights behind us. Just you and me. I know that you want to hear from me. And I know that I want to tell you a thing or two. Call me and let me tell you about the night that we'll have here on the edge of the hill with the city lights behind us. I have many different fantasies for you to listen to. Fantasies about you and me. You and me alone at the top of the hill. With the beautiful city lights behind us. Call now. Just think. You and me on the side of the hill. What a beautiful, wonderful, romantic evening we're having together. I run my hands through your hair. I put my hand down on the back of your neck. I reach over and kiss you. I tell you how pretty you look. How wonderful you are. And now I want to get hot and nasty with you. Now, I want you to call and hear what you and I are going to do together. We're on the top of the hill with the beautiful city lights. Just look. We FBI serial killer squad are now at the top of a hill in Los Angeles. They have so far recovered nine unidentified female bodies. First reports suggest that all of them were bored. Since the Inquisition is undoubtedly the great singer, dancer, and all-purpose guest star, Charo. Back in the 70s, this was the face that dominated the Donnie and Marie show. And remember the love boat? It was full of extraordinary looking people all traveling in a tight circle, getting nowhere. But the most extraordinary person knew what she was doing. Charo was the love boat's most frequent guest passenger. going to teach aerobics. She's our new fitness instructor. And then, Jane Fonda, see if you can do that. Ow! Oh, I, I love my job. I'm going to do that. Charo is the world's leading coochie coochie dancer. Ladies, if you've never danced the coochie coochie, this is the way it's done. The idea is to shake your maracas until the men clutch their marimbas. <laughs> Charo's exultant personality has also made her the favorite guest of every television host in the world. Would you welcome Charo? Ladies and gentlemen, Charo! Here is Charo. The great Charo. Incomparable Charo. Ladies and gentlemen, the incomprehensible Charo. The original coochie coochie person, Charo. Ladies and gentlemen, Charo. The entertainer of the year. The dynamic Charo. The fabulous Charo. The unique and the very special Charo! Now, with Charo's career bigger than ever in the 90s, as she rides on the crest of an award-winning album, I, too, am about to play host to the guest of the century as we go by satellite to Honolulu 
and say, can you hear me, Charo? Aloha, Eloklai. Welcome to Hawaii. Welcome to Honolulu. Welcome to the Auriger Hotel in Waikiki. So hot. How are you? I'm, I'm fine, so Charo. Let's have fun. Especially now I'm talking to you. Charo, your accent is still very distinctive. You were born and bred in Spain, weren't you? How do you know that? I really was born in Spain in a town called Murcia. Did you watch my tongue? Murcia. <laughs> Murcia is near Valencia, Cieza, Cáceres, Albacete, Andalucía, etc., etc., etc. You see my tongue? This is Castilla. In Spain, where I come from, everybody talks like this. You're known as the coochie, coochie girl. Does that mean what I think it means? <laughs> Absolutely right, Clyde. Coochie, coochie is an expression about passion and love. I make it very famous in the United States and South America. But other country call it other name. It means the same thing. Like French people. French people call it l'amour. And Irish people, they call it the leprechaun lambada. And uh, African American, they call it doing the nasty. <laughs> Japanese people, they call it the sushi pushy. And Latinos y Españoles, we call it chorizo con huevos, por favor. English means sausage and eggs, please. Well, uh, Gucci, Gucci, you got it? Here in Britain, we call it bonking. Oh, bonking! Bonking! Oh, I like that. To bonking or not to bonking, that is the question. Charo, on the, the remarkably successful The Love Boat, you appeared more often than anybody else as a guest star. Why was that? I think the producer keep inviting me to do more and more uh, appearance because they didn't know what the hell I was talking about. <laughs> so I know for sure that they were saying, bring that bitch back to see one of those times. We understand what she said. You may be remembered in Britain for your appearances on the Donny and Marie show. How did you get on with the squeaky clean Osmond clan? They are friendly and they're beautiful. The only problem is, you know that, they're normal. They don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't eat chocolate, they don't even say shit. I mean, nothing. Zero. El zero. But they gucci gucci a lot. You know why? Because they, pr they reproduce like rabbits. Every time I go to Utah, I see more and more and more and more Osmo. Hello. Gucci gucci. One more. Gucci gucci. Another Osmo. Gucci gucci gucci. Three Osmo. All the time. I hear that you're about to launch your career in Japan. What do you think they'll make of you there? Big success. A Japanese like me, I know that. You need three ingredients to be accepted by the Japanese. One reason, I'm short. Second reason, I'm blonde. Third reason, I have big teeth. So if you, if you have these three conditions, go to Japan. You're going to become the most famous there. Oh. You speak English wonderfully, Charo. Do you have any plans uh -huh. to, to come to Britain and wow the audiences here? Maybe I go to London. I love to meet the London uh, men, the English men, they're famous. They say that they're very sexy. They're bloody sexy. And well, I would love to be there. Charo, I'm afraid that, uh, that my coochie coochie days are numbered. What's the secret? Oh, Clyde, don't ever say that. You are such a good looking guy. It is always <laughs> a secret, and I'm going to give it to you. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You I'm... eat a good paella. 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 Drink sangria. Mix sangria, champagne, sugar, wine. Turn on my CD, Gucci Gucci Fever. And if you do these three things, if you make love, you're going to make triples. Charo, if you can't come here soon, then I'll be on the next plane to Hawaii. Thank you very much, Charo. I'm waiting for you. Aloha. Come to Mama Gucci Gucci. Come to Hawaii. These are cropping up all across the continent. Easily the best is the UK US U2 series. With the aid of this video, Anyone can learn to speak English in a manner which will astonish with its precision, its fluency, and above all, its naturalness. It's a typically English day in Brighton, and two typically English young men are off on their adventures. Well, here I am, riding my bike around town with my best friend, Anthony. Don't worry about it. I'll stay here and wait for you. I don't smoke a pipe. You know I don't like it. It's a bad habit, isn't it? Yes, in a certain way it is. <laughs> but I like it. I like smoking my pipe. And cigarettes, too. But I don't smoke the pipe when I'm with you, do I? <laughs> what a wonderful new pipe. Yeah, it was passed by one of our best craftsmen in Sussex. 
It's beautifully carved. It's a really fantastic piece of work. You may suspect that beneath this nervous talk about pipes lies the yearning of two shy young Englishmen desperate to form a deeper relationship. Your suspicions will be confirmed when they go to the gentlemen's outfitters and start talking about trousers and, even more significantly, boots. Aren't um, those trousers great? Yes, they certainly are. I need a new pair for horse riding in the country. The old ones I've got now are in terrible shape. And what about the boots? Aren't they superbly shaped? I like that style. Oh, yes, they're truly the nicest boots that I've ever seen. I bet they were made by one of the best boot makers. Well, I've got to go. I'm in the hood. Already? Yes, it's all right. Yes, for one of these typically shy young Englishmen, heartbreak lies ahead. When shall we meet next? Have you got any time for me on Sunday night? You're asking too much. On Sunday night, I drive Polly back to Yorkshire. You are a traitor, aren't you? Oh, no. I'm in love, that's all. <laughs> so our young friend in the unacceptable blue anorak has been spurned. Perhaps he can find satisfaction in a more normal relationship. Off he goes to a farm, inhabited exclusively by farmers' wives who can't act and animals who can. It was a lovely day, and the farmer's wife was very kind to me. Good morning, Mrs. Brown. Good morning, Charles. Is this new bicycle yours? Of course it's mine. It isn't my father's, it's mine. Ah, have you come for some fresh milk for your family? Uh, not only for that, Mrs. Brown. You know, I love this place. And these animals. Ah, I see, there are some small calves. Are there any bullocks or cows? Well, I think I'll milk Rosie. Charles, haven't you seen how fat the hens, the geese, and the pigeons are? They've become quite splendid. Have you ever seen such plump chickens? <laughs> Ugh, she's thinking of her Christmas turkey. <laughs> and the cock? Oh, you eggs. They won't ever become chickens. And there's the cock, the happy male with all his females. Come with me, my dear. You're so thin. Come, I'll give you something tasty to eat. Are you hungry? Have you got any pigs? Well, here you are, my dear. Oh, only half of it, please. Can you cut it in half? Here, use this knife. The raven-haired beauty on the right is the best actor for the language student to copy because she never says anything. <laughs> the two wives, the farmer's wife and her son's wife, who is in love with me, prepared something else for me. But I didn't eat everything. I only tried a little. It was so delicious. Oh, you've only eaten a little. That's why you're so slim. Well, here's the milk for your family. For Mama, Papa, and your sister. How much is it? That will be half a crown. Oh, I can't pay you now. <laughs> Write it down in your notebook. I'll owe it to you. Well, um, thanks for the lovely meal. Uh, but I haven't helped you milk the cows. Well, never mind. Come back soon and I'll teach you how to. <laughs> what have they both got in store for him on his next visit? <laughs> and now, it's been said that for the woman we are about to meet, any husband in the world would be ready to change his life completely if it were not for the sneaking suspicion that he'd have to change himself as well. Not only is she tall, slim, beautiful, and glossy, she's also likely to flare her delicately sculpted nostrils with contempt when you order the second cheapest wine on the list. <laughs> and yet her heart pulses with compassion for the underprivileged, including myself. Which is why, as she stands superbly poised to begin her next ITV series of class act, I can say, make way for a fantasy figure who really exists, Joanna Lumley. <laughs> Joanna, you've just seen that remarkable English language video for gullible Italians. What, what did you think of it? It was helpful, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I just felt that my... I just... What I loved is the, is the way that they just jumped easily, as we do in normal conversations, just straight into, do you like my pipe? Or I don't like cigarettes. You know, they just go straight into things. You don't have any preamble. And in life, why should you? Yeah, and you should say, it's not, it is, it's not my father's bike, it's my bike. Yeah, yeah. at once. <laughs> 
just to hold off any accusations. Yeah. And I loved it when they, they panned round to the, tr the favourite trousers. There seemed to be a sort of dismembered jockey in the window. <laughs> there was nothing there. There were just sort of flaky bits. Oh. And I thought the, the farmer's wife was my favourite. Farmer's wife is very good indeed. Um, I've always longed to be a farmer's wife. I love the idea of being able to go around just in a sort of lacy shawl. And she also didn't have to ask, qu answer questions, because he said, do you have any bullocks? And she said, <laughs> I will now milk Rosie, you know. <laughs> and about three or four minutes later, she came around to the bullock question. She just had to let that one filter in. Oh, it was great. But my favourite was Curly, the blonde Curly boy. Yes. Who was going to drive Polly to Yorkshire. Yeah. <laughs> I just went for him. Did you notice where his cue cards were? Just down there. Yeah. <laughs> but they weren't only, only, not only in the wrong angle, they were too far away, so I had to keep walk over to them and keep disappearing. <laughs> it was good, wasn't it? Have you ever, uh, I was just going to say, have you ever done anything as bad as that? And I thought I'd better rephrase the question. But yes, <laughs> early in... Regularly, you mean, is what you want to say. You, Joanna, you want to say regularly have done as... as but early trash. in your career, you, you, I think you, you must have I done... I did anything, actually. Yeah. Because I wasn't trained at drama school, I knew I had a very slim hope of getting any work at all. So I just did anything anybody asked me to do, without batting an eye. I said, yeah, I'll do it. What is it? Yeah, I'll do it. But right now, because of Pat Patty has been such a huge success, I see they're pulling everything out that they've ever done and sticking it on the air. It's, it's all come. It's like drowning. You suddenly see your whole life rushing in front of you. You know, old bits of Steptoe and Son mingled up with Call My Bluff, mingled up with old things. Also, they've got the new Avengers out. They've got Sapphire and Steel out. What about the Satanic Rites of Knitting Dracula? Knitting patterns. Satanic Rites... I have a feeling you didn't like that. Oh, no. I, I, it was, I tell you what it was. It was the last ever um, proper Dracula film with Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. So it's a bit of a special one for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't care about the acting in that, you know. I was there. Did we, were, you, <laughs> were you bitten or did you do the biting? The nearly movie? bitten, nearly. Mm -hmm. had a fight with some, with dra with some bitten girls. What was that? We did some yeah. of that. We did some of that fighting with our fingernails on. <laughs> and then I was put to be the bride of Dracula forever. And Christopher Lee laid me out. Black candle. Psh, like, I think, ah. And then the roof blew up. <laughs> and so he never bit me, and I was never his bride. Yeah. What, are you, what are you, you're such a huge star now. And, and lots, of, uh, lots of big stars turn up their noses at commercials. Or any, they, they do them in Japan when no one knows they're doing them. But, but you don't, you actually do... I'm in like Flint, aren't I? In. <laughs> you show it to me, darling, I'm going, water, have you drunk some? <laughs> you just show it to me. I can't resist it. You uh, see, I can't, it's the old training I had, don't turn anything down. People ask me to do it. So even now they come and say, you're knitting pattern. You go, part of me is going, no, I don't want to do it. I'm going, yes, where's the jersey? <laughs> I can't stop. So, you know, they come and say, advertise this, I'm in. Charo, Charo is a whole lot of water. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> What's the secret of her charm, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> a certain emphasis on sexuality, perhaps? I uh, just <laughs> thought she was great. She was so enthusiastic, and she never had to. This is the other great thing about languages. When you speak that kind of, you don't have to think any more, you don't have to talk to it, you know. Yeah. And I just loved it. I liked it. I thought it was okay. very good. Do that again. No. <laughs> <laughs> I missed I, it the first time, and I want to be there when it happens again. I just right. love the way, also, what, oh, I liked her, her great enthusiasm. She said, when she'd come onto that love boat, and she said, and did, did Jane Fonda thing, and I'd go, show you, and i go, oh, like this, and I thought, actually, Fonda could manage that, you yeah. know. But Shara saw that as the biggest thing you could do. Could you, could you, oh. <laughs> She's in terrific shape. She's been around the block a few times, you know. She's been in the business a long, long time. And, uh... <laughs> and, uh I'm bound to say, and I wouldn't want to get you jealous here. Yes, I would. Uh, I would. <laughs> but yeah, she's a very, very sexy number because she's, she's she's confident, confident I mean, in her sexuality. I think. Do you know how tall she is? Is she titchy? She's really? she's about four feet three. Is she tiny? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Actually, you and Charo are alike in one respect. Yeah, uh, I felt. I felt. Oh what? Oh no, go on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you both had convent educations. I, I looked it up. This is research. This is research talking here. Yeah. But you both educated in a convent. Now, where did the nuns go wrong with Charo? We ask ourselves. Do you think they went wrong? I think well, this is just the ad advertisement for convent education. Yeah, which would be. As you can get me getting older and older. Yeah. <laughs> or you get Charo getting younger and younger. Got you, got you. <laughs> she's fantastic. <laughs> I think she's great. Well, she says that Englishmen are very sexy. She caught my attention in a big way, you know, who knows. And oh. she says that Englishmen are very sexy, and I was ready to enroll myself as an honorary Englishman, because she has no idea what an Australian is. <laughs> and, uh, but what, 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 do you think Englishmen are, are sexy? Oh, of course. Yeah. Well, Luckily, right. my husband's in Denmark tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're what? great. No, I, what I mean is I don't think Englishmen are sexy. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, well, how about Australian men? I think Australian men are great. 
I, I actually, at the moment, in my caravan, we have lunch breaks just at the time of Neighbours. And so um, I, I watch Neighbours at lunchtime. It's very old. It's all repeats. But anyway, I'm getting into it now. I'm well, the old ones are the best ones, because they've got Strain and Hunks in them, like Hunks. Craig McLaughlin. And, and that well, fantasy. I don't know their names. I just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what about Jeff, uh, the man at the top of the hill? Did well, his fantasy sort of race your motto? Is that Absolutely. You've got the city lights and you're on the top of the hill. Or you got just on the side of the hill at one point yeah. and the city lights, and then you're back on the top of the hill. Well, he's, 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 he's got range. You know? he top of the hill, side of the hill, you name it, he can do it. Yeah. <laughs> How can I phrase this? Would you like to join Jeff on the top of the hill? I couldn't get the dimensions of him. He just seemed to be a torso. <laughs> also, I don't yeah. think... I mean, he's buried <laughs> in the top of the hill. <laughs> That's why he's standing so stiffly. He's been up there for so long, <laughs> turning around yeah. to look at the city lights and he's screwed he's himself into the hill. Yeah. Into the ground. Yeah. And I have a feeling that Jeff has never met anybody in the way he's... <laughs> he's up there yearning for it, you know, just yearning to meet anybody, make contact and get hot. Hot and nasty. I feel Jeff's got some sort of huge... And he's only 32 and a half P a minute or something. <laughs> Yeah, you're sort of equipped to deal with him. Could you still do that kickboxing stuff? Oh, I don't. Yeah. You're still, you, you yeah. Can, yeah. Well, that's actually what I can do. You actually, it's only sitting down. Right here, but... you, you, learn, you actually, because uh, I always wanted to get kicked in the head by you, actually. <laughs> Dream no longer, Clive. <laughs> but Je Jeff says he's got lots of fantasies. And I, I think he's working on the subject that women have got lots of fantasies. Yes, he, 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 the, he, then he ground to a halt. He couldn't even begin on one. He couldn't get into that, could he? The, the truth is that, that, that Los Angeles, which I'm sure you've spent some time there. Not very long, actually. Yeah. No, would really, you like to? No. Yeah. I don't want to say that, but it's, it seems so big and you're not allowed to walk anywhere. Yeah, because it's, because it's think, crawling with people like it's Jeff. Craw yeah, Jeff yeah. is crawling around yeah, Los yeah. Angeles. <laughs> When he finally gets himself he out of the top of the, the hill, torso he walks in. and he's just got the hands. He's dragging himself around. <laughs> how, would, how would Patsy handle Jeff? I mean, actually, Jeffs don't go for Patsy. They're a bit too frightened. She'd rent him, but I mean, I don't think she could... <laughs> I don't think she'd go through any preliminaries in that top of the hill business. I think it's very slow. You're set to join Jennifer Saunders in the film version of Absolutely Fabulous, for, and I'm sure you'll win the Academy Award. Uh, how would Patsy accept the Oscar? Yeah. She's just going, yeah, cheers, thanks a lot. I mean, I think that was it. Thank you very much, Joanna Lumley. <laughs> Time to go, as we go out on a wave of music generated by the compulsive Yamaha of the New York domicile Hispanic thrush, Margarita Prakatan. Do you remember the way Love Affair sang Everlasting Love back in the 60s? It never sounded like this. Shake it and break it, Margarita Prakatan. Oh, Andre, I love you from the bottom of my heart, baby. Open your eyes, then you realize he and I stand with my every lasting love. For the first time, open all your heart. I want to be your pride, every lasting love. Light is on the shine, endlessly in shine. Beautiful hair. Look, this color, these highlights.